The Extraordinary Chambers in the Courts of Cambodia, the ECCC, was established in response to the crimes committed by the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia between 1975 and 1979. Paul Pot and the Khmer Rouge seized power in Cambodia on April 17, 1975. They renamed the country Democratic Kampuchea. They ruled until they were toppled on January 6, 1979. It is believed that as many as 1.7 million Cambodians, one-fourth of the population, died from execution, torture, starvation, and other inhumane living conditions during the Khmer Rouge regime. In 1997, the royal government of Cambodia requested assistance from the United Nations to try senior Khmer Rouge leaders. After several years of negotiations, an agreement was reached in 2003, providing for international participation and assistance to the ECCC. The extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia can only try two categories of alleged perpetrators, senior leaders of democratic Kampuchea and those believed to be most responsible for the crimes committed between April 17, 1975 and January 6, 1979. The ECCC is a special Cambodian court. It applies both national and international law. It is currently handling four cases. So far, it has detained and indicted five persons in the first two cases. In cases 003 and 004, no suspect has been arrested or indicted as of January 2013. Case 001 against Gengak Yu, alias Duk was concluded in early 2012. On February 3, 2012, the Supreme Court Chamber pronounced the final judgment. It upheld the guilty verdict handed down by the trial chamber in July 2010. It quashed the previous sentence and it extended the 35-year term to imprisonment for life, the maximum sentence available under the law. The Supreme Court Chamber affirms that Duke held a central leadership role at the Security Center S-21, where at least 12,272 prisoners were systematically tortured and eventually executed. The decisions of the Supreme Court Chamber are final and cannot be appealed. As for K-002, the trial chamber continues the hearing of evidence in the trial, which began on December 5, 2011, following opening statements. Since the first day, the three defendants have been brought into the courtroom to face a bench of national and international judges. The defendants are Kiu Sompong, former head of state of Democratic Kampuchea, Nun Chia, former chief of the National Assembly and deputy secretary of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, and Ying Sari, former deputy prime minister and minister in charge of foreign affairs. They are charged with crimes against humanity, grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions of 1949, and genocide. The fourth defendant, Ying Tarit, was found unfit to stand trial as she suffers from progressive dementia. She was released from detention in September 2012 and is currently under judicial supervision. Any charged person and any accused before the ECCC has the right to be represented by both a Cambodian and an international defense lawyer of their own choice. They shall be presumed innocent so long as guilt has not been established through a final judgment. The ECCC has two co-prosecutors, one Cambodian and one international. Investigations of crimes and suspected perpetrators are launched upon request from these co-prosecutors. The co-prosecutors send a request for investigation to the co-investigating judges, one Cambodian and one international. The co-investigating judges carry out the actual investigation in an independent manner. They conduct their investigation impartially and they are obliged to search for both inculpatory as well as exonerating evidence. Once their investigation is concluded, the co-investigating judges issue a closing order. In the closing order, they may either indict the charged person and send him or her for trial or they may dismiss the case, thereby ending the proceedings against the charged person. A decision of the co-investigating judges is subject to appeal 
before the ECCC's pre-trial chamber. The pre-trial chamber is composed of three Cambodian and two international judges. They hear appeals and motions relating to the investigative phase of a case, such as appeals relating to provisional detention or other decisions made by the co-investigating judges. Once a case is sent for trial, the trial chamber takes over responsibility for the case. The trial chamber is composed of three Cambodian and two international judges. The trial chamber examines all evidence presented and hears witness testimony. At the conclusion of trial, the trial chamber issues a verdict. In the verdict, the trial chamber judges decide, based on the evidence and arguments presented during trial, whether the accused person is guilty or not guilty in the eyes of the law. In case of conviction, they decide what sentence to impose. Parties may appeal any trial chamber decision to the Supreme Court chamber. The Supreme Court chamber is composed of four Cambodian and three international judges. Supreme Court chamber decisions are final and cannot be appealed. The ECCC has special voting rules. These rules ensure that neither Cambodian nor international judges can make decisions alone. In order to make a decision in the pretrial chamber and the trial chamber, four out of five judges must vote together. In the Supreme Court chamber, decisions are taken by a supermajority of five out of seven judges. For example, if only three out of five trial chamber judges believe that an accused is guilty, there is no supermajority and the accused must be set free. However, if four out of five judges believe that an accused is guilty, a supermajority will have been reached and the person will be convicted and sentenced. The ECCC is the first court of its kind to allow victims to participate directly in the trial proceedings as civil parties. Civil parties are represented by lawyers who can question the accused and witnesses during trial. Civil parties can make claims for collective and moral reparations. However, no individual monetary compensation may be awarded. During the trial phase, civil party representation in court is coordinated by two co-lead lawyers one Cambodian, and one international. Holding the trials in Cambodia, where the crimes were committed, has many benefits to Cambodians, because they can participate in the trials and have more opportunities to learn about the court. In addition to legal proceedings, the ECCC's nationwide outreach, regional forum and study tour programs have been perceived as important factors in raising public awareness about the court among ordinary Cambodians, helping to enhance the public's understanding of the court's process and its interest in the proceedings. More than 170,000 people have visited the court since the start of the first trial. As of December 31, 2012, more than 67,000 people have attended the trial hearings in K002 alone. This number is unprecedented in comparison to other courts.